This is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. Have I got a great song for you guys today? Not originally on guitar, really, but great music works on every instrument, right? We're gonna learn how to do "Waiting for a Girl Like You" by Foreigner. So um, I apologize, especially for that chorus right there, trying to kind of sing along to it, so you guys know where I'm at in the song. I'm no Lou Graham. This is quite obvious. Very, very obvious. So, uh, not a vocal lesson. Lucky for you. Anyway, so, but I'm going to go through all the chords for this song. It really lays out really well on the guitar. There's a couple of parts that you saw me play there that I'm going to give you variations for. Um, things are a lot easier on like a synth, like that chord, um, that voicing. Uh, kind of a major add nine. It's difficult on the guitar, but we can cheat it, and I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, so we're going to go through the entire song. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Before we get into it, please subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so you know when I release a new video, so you can like and comment, hopefully. And uh, if you really want to support what I do here on YouTube, uh, the best way to do it is actually just join my Guitar Academy so you get something for it as well. Uh, you'll see a link to my Academy in the description below. That'll give you That link will give you a free seven-day trial too. So my Academy contains all my guitar courses, covering everything from complete beginner courses to more advanced courses on technique, improvisation, ear training, theory, guitar tone. I go live. I have a live video chat with Academy members every weekend. So um, you can get your questions answered every weekend. You can also contact me. Uh, I you get individual support from me uh, if you're a member of the academy. So please go check it out. So let's jump into the track. So I'm tuned into I'm tuned to standard here, but I do have a capo at the first fret there. That's really the only way you're going to be able to play this in the original key um, and still get that cool little synth part. Make it sound pretty like it so um well worth it throw a capo in there um and you'll be good to go all right so let's start here with these chords by the way these opening chords that's what's going on underneath that synth part so if that's a little bit over your head at this point when i get to that just continue doing these chords that's what it's over it's basically the verse too all right so what am i doing there so this is just an A minor chord in front of the capo there, which makes it a B flat minor, but I'm just gonna say, kind of call it that shape. It's gonna make it easier. So the A minor in front of the capo. And then we're gonna jump up here and do this. Uh, you probably learned this. It's like a uh, an F your first bar chord, kind of bar, because there's bar and two strings. It's a little F shape that you did at the first fret, um, you know, in the second, a second week of guitar playing probably. You can be playing that one at the fourth fret. So I'm barring across the fourth fret, across the high E and the B. 5th fret there on the G, and 6th fret on the D, and very important, keep that open A string in there as well, so I know it's an open B flat right now, but, so we have the, the root note is the same for each chord, 
So we have this. Now the synth doesn't hit this like I'm. I, I'm kind of filling up the sound a little bit since you know the guitar doesn't sustain like a synth does. So I'm just kind of strumming them more than on the recording. They're kind of doing that kind of thing, but but you're doing like an acoustic guitar thing. You're gonna to have to strum it to make it kind of sound decent. So. And then back. And now I have arranged this little keyboard like that everybody knows. So it's really cool if you can kind of kick into it on acoustic guitar. People, oh, look at that. So. actual verse. So what am I doing there? So I'm going to start here. I'm borrowing the 6th fret across the high E, B, and the G. And then I'm playing the 8th fret there on the D string. And we have to keep that A, that a string ringing. So, so we have a melody... So we have kind of that melody going on, it's just mostly on the uh, high E string. So when you first hold this chord, so you're doing that bar up the 6th fret, you ha have the 8th fret there on the D. The beginning of it, you're going to also have the pinky there at the ninth fret there on the high E string. So you strum the open A and all those chords, 8th fret on the D, 6th on the G, and B, and ninth on the high E. So from there, you just let the chord ring. And you do this little melody on top. So, so you already get that first note, that nine, when you strum that chord. And then you're going to pick the B string, which you're already holding at the sixth fret. Then move that pinky down to the eighth fret. And then back to the B string that you're already holding, that note. And then pick up that note, and you're going to play the sixth fret on the high E string. So it goes, and after each one, you're gonna go back and hit the B string. So wait. All right, and then we're gonna jump back here to the fourth fret. Sorry. Made it jazz real quick for a second. So we have basically, I'm doing a bar again. Um, so I'm just barring across the fourth fret of the B and the high E. And then you're gonna hold the fifth fret on there on the G. So it's just like that chord we did, right? So when you basically, when you go from here, you're gonna grab that fourth fret there on the high E string and then strum across, hold that chord that we did earlier, strum across just the four middle strings. You want that to be the melody note because that's where, that's where the keyboard melody goes. But we also want to hit the chord in there too. So we have to hit that melody note first, the top string, then strum the chord while getting that melody note at the top of the chord. So I'm just stopping my strum on that B string so you hear that as the melody. And then we have the chord and it's a lot easier after that. You're just going to go back to the 6th fret there on the high E string and pick the B again, which you're already holding with the 4th fret, and then pick that note up and so it's just the 4th fret on the high E string, which is part of the bar, and then back down to the 4th fret on the B, so with this. And then we're going to end the melody like this. Now, I'm going to end the melody differently when I'm going to the verse, because I want to grab this note here, but that's going to be the only difference. So we, we're going to have this at first. I'm going to grab that note here, so whenever we have to start over that little synth figure. So this is going to be 6 on the B, 7, I'm sorry, 6 on the B, 6 on the G, then 4 on the B. Then jump over here to the 8th fret there on the D. It's a little bit of a skip, 
but it's only one note and it's a nice little guide finger to now lay the chord down. So just start that phrase over again. Now at the end of the song you'll hear this repeated over and over again and then you'll always kind of keep going back to this one. So. So, now right there, I'm going to, instead of ending that melody like that, when I'm going back to start the actual verse when the vocals come in, you're going to want to play this note down here, because you want to be at that chord. So we have this last note, I'm going to move it from the 8th fret on the D to right here, the 3rd fret there, or 2 frets in front of the caper there on the G string. And then we just go back to those chords that we did in the intro. So, So, we did this intro. Basically twice. This little altered ending to get us back here and then we start this those the same chords there. So, we've already seen those. But you see when I get when it gets to the when you love someone, it does this. So that's going to be an E minor 7 chord, really an F sharp minor 7 chord, but you know, comparing it to the capo, it's, it's played like you would play an E minor 7. So it's going to be the open low E string, then two frets in front of the capo there on the A string, open D, open G, then three fret, frets in front of the capo on the uh, B string, and then open high E. And then that goes to a D major chord, which is a regular D, uh, well, obviously D in front of the capo. And I like to add the A string in the bass there, the D chord. So it's just that E minor, when you love someone, do that again. When you love someone. Then it kind of continues the verse, but it's just over these two chords. Feel so right. And at the very end, leading into the pre-chorus, we have an uh, it's an E7 shape uh, in front of the capo. So that's just like an E major in front of the capo. But then add there um, three frets in front of the capo there, or the fourth fret on the guitar. You'll see. I'm gonna add this seven to the chord. So it's just an E E major chord with that added. Makes it an E dominant seven, by the way, if you don't know that. So we have this. Alright, now we get to the pre-chorus, and this is the section that the the voicing that's being played on the synth, on the keys, is going to be kind of challenging on the guitar. You can tell it takes a really big stretch. I like the sound of it, so I play it that way, but I'm going to give you a way that you can get pretty close to the sound too um, without that big stretch. So here's the pre-chorus with the way that I'm playing it with the full voicing there. So here we go. Maybe I'm wrong. Won't you tell me if I'm coming? So what I'm doing here 
This is a major add nine shape. Big prog rock thing, you know? So I'm barring a fret right there. So it's basically like, let's do this. Right in front of the capo, hold like the what year would be an F major bar chord in front of the capo, which is obviously F sharp major right now. So after you have that shape, you need to be able to take this, the fourth fret there of the D, and move it up to the sixth fret. That makes it a nine. That note a ninth. So it, technically the chord is called a major add nine chord. Add nine, not a major nine chord. There's no seventh in the chord. It's got that very airy quality about it. It's really beautiful. So. So they take that chord and then move it up two frets to this bar chord. There, like three frets in front of the capo, just a regular A major, I mean, a regular major shape. So we have this. Just rotate between those chords. So a lot easier way of doing that, if you can use your thumb, sounds very, very close. Basically the third is not in here now, so it makes it a sus two chord. And then the same chord we won't get to, but it's easy to kind of rotate back and forth if you just use a thumb for both. So I'm doing a thumb, one uh, fret in front of the capo there, and then I have, so it's basically like this. If you have an F major chord, all right, in front of the capo, replace this bottom one with your thumb, the bottom note, and then you can lift up the, the note that's on the G string, let that ring open, and then just add the first fret there, there on the second fret. So that makes it a sus two, which is very, very close to the sound. Here's the difference to this. So, nobody's gonna notice. <laughs> so you play that, and then move it up two frets, and then put that fifth fret down on the G string as well, just make it like the full chord. But I like to, instead of transitioning to the bar, and then go back to the thumb, and then back to the bar, it's sometimes easier to just kinda keep it as a thumb chord. That still has that airy quality so might be a good alternative for you there all right now we get to the chorus here which the chords are pretty easy it's just impossible to sing so i'll do my best looks like this I've been waiting. So that starts with just a like a D minor shape in front of the capo. And then what he's gonna do is take that to a minor seven shape. So what you wanna do is bar the uh, one fret in front of the capo there across the B and the high E string. So do that while you're holding that regular minor shape. So it's like a D minor shape, which I wanna make sure you're barring across those two strings. Cause then all you gotta do to get to the minor seven is pick up your pinky then back to the minor and then back to the minor seven. So there's those little back and forth while he's doing that. He goes, I've been waiting. So it kind of goes, so it goes. Mm -hmm. 
And then it goes to what we would see at, in front of the capo, a B flat. Obviously it's a B. So that's just holding the first fret up in front of the capo there the, on the A string and then barring that standard major bar chord shape here one fret in front of the capo. I'm barring there at the fourth fret there on the D, G, and the B. You can use your, I like to use my pinky because I like, I like, I like to suffer. Anyway, but no, this is, uh, or you can just use your uh, ring finger there. So we have this. I've been waiting. Then back to that D minor shape, and then you basically go to a, a, a minor seven shape here. Um, we're we're going to be doing uh, really to make it sound closer to the keyboard voicing. Um, you can hit the open A string there, but a lot of times I kind of hear that note as the end of bass. So that's the second fret on the uh, in front of the capo on the D. Open G, first fret in front of the capo on the B, open a high E. So you can hit the open A string in there, so it's like, like an A minor 7 shape, or strum from the fourth fret, the fourth string across. So with this. And then we go back to kind of start the progression over again. I've been waiting. Now the second time through the chord progression, from this kind of B flat shape, we're gonna go up here and play this bar chord here. So this is at the fourth fret on the guitar, three frets in front of the capo, full bar, it's just a minor shape, sixth fret on the A, and sixth fret on the D. So all together for both, um, basically this is the full chorus here that they repeat twice, so we have this. you get to that minor bar chord the second time that's the end of the chorus and then you're just gonna go four five on the low E string real quick that transitions us into that and back to the same same verse again so there's really nothing new in the song. From there, it's just the same verse chords, same pre-chorus, same chorus, pretty much same chorus chords. Things might be played different lengths, but it's the same chords. Um, um, so nothing new. And then the song, just after the second chorus, just really kind of does this. The rest of the song. So that kind of works really well on the guitar. I take a little bit of practice, a little bit of a finger twister, but it's fun. It's fun to play. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a beautiful track, and I think it, you know, comes across really well on on the guitar. Well, you have one of these guys. If you don't, you're in a lot of trouble. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.